on the on the green infrastructure side from a municipal perspective, uh, we're looking we're looking at things. Probably the biggest one is stormwater. Uh, the more the more canopy cover that you have, whether it's uh, natural woodlands, but especially uh, canopy interspersed with your other land uses. And so you've got canopy over impervious surfaces like roofs and, and pavement and sidewalk and so on. Uh, the more of that that you have, uh, the lower your requirements for gray infrastructure to control stormwater management. And it's, it's a huge uh, cost savings to not have to replicate the green infrastructure services with gray infrastructure now. But it's an avoided cost that typically nobody bothered to uh, calculate in, yeah. the, in the past. Yeah. That's changing now. Uh, so that's probably the probably one of the biggest ones for municipalities, uh, because municipalities are, are clearly in charge of uh, local stormwater management. Mm -hmm. um, then there are things that are a little uh, farther afield. Uh, air quality, for instance, uh, more of a provincial mandate. Uh, but uh, forests and uh, urban trees, uh, they're filtering the air all the time. Um, shade, uh, again, not entirely a municipal thing, but you know, we have uh, public uh, health units that are uh, promoting more shade and access to shade. Uh, and I, I'm sure it's only going to become more important In terms of uh, people's uh, life experience, quality of life, um, trees are uh, soothing. Uh, so there's uh, lower crime rates where there's more uh, greenery. Uh, there's uh, commercial folks like it because where the, where the street is greener, people buy more stuff. Um, it actually slows. Is that because they slow down? Is, it, is that part of it, or do you know? Uh, I was just going to say, yeah. people slow down yeah. and, on, on greener streets. Um, no, I think, uh, I think it's because more people go there and they're enjoying the time that they're spending more. Yeah. Uh, not, only, not only by the actual uh, temperature they might be experiencing on a summer day, sure. Uh, but because it feels like a nicer place, so let's stay here and spend more money. Uh, what we talked about when we walked from the blazing sun out there into the shade here, which is probably five degrees cooler, uh, uh, so urban heat island effect. Uh, we've gone from uh, a society where uh, winter was our highest energy use season uh, to that being flip-flop now Everybody's got an air conditioner, and now summer is our uh, highest uh, energy use because of air conditioning. Um, so the more that we can have our green infrastructure doing our air conditioning for us, uh, the less we have to spend on burning fossil fuels or whatever uh, to get that same energy to cool the air that we're breathing. If we have enough trees, uh, most of the time, uh, or let's not say most of the time, but uh, you, you take the, some people would be able to go without air conditioning, some people could take the shoulders off yeah. the, the air conditioning peaks. You know? yeah. So uh, aesthetics, habitat, uh, spiritual, there's so many, so many reasons uh, that urban forests are important and good. If I had one, I'd be wearing an ISA ball cap right now that says trees are good. Because I, I think summarizes it for me. I think, that's a, I think that's a good mantra. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's a good mantra and a good, uh, probably, endpoint. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. That was fun. <laughs>